Hey everybody, how's it going? Today I'd like to talk about my press strategy and something that is really important to get out of the way before I continue moving forward with my advocacy for right to repair. I saw many of the comments on the video that I did yesterday where I was interviewed by Sam Cedar about right to repair for his show. There were many angry, salty comments saying, Lewis, I believed in right to repair. I no longer believe in it if you talk to this man. I watched you for five years, but you talked to that person. You lost all your credibility. Unsubscribed. And I think it's very important to point out how childish this is, and I want to explain what my strategy is and why I believe this is very childish. I showed up in Maine last year, and I remember speaking with a Joel Stetkus, and at the end of a hearing, he listened to everything we had to say, and he said that nobody showed up from our home state. We had about a dozen lobbyists show up, all telling us why this is bad, and not one person showed up from our home state in support. What that tells me is that having a reach of a million subscribers on my channel is not enough. I need to learn how to reach out to people that otherwise would not know about this outside of my channel. Because at the end of the day, I could get 10 million views on a video on this channel. But if I don't reach out to enough people outside of this channel, and when a hearing occurs, nobody from that home state shows up, I lose. I need more people to be involved, to be excited, to be inspired, to speak to their politicians, to speak to their friends, to promote this idea. And the way that I plan to do that is on explaining it to as many people as humanly possible. I want to reach through to as many people as humanly possible from as many different sides in the political and philosophical spectrum as humanly possible. And I would like to take Right to Repair and package it in a manner where it appeals to them. If you are someone on the left, you may not like the fact that large multi-billion dollar companies are trying to squeeze out the little guy with each passing day, and you may care about it from an environmental perspective. If you're on the right, a saying like, you will own nothing and be happy, probably has a meaning to you when it comes to property rights, and right to repair very much so relates to that, and you probably are not the type of person temperamentally to want Tim Cook or Elon Musk telling you what you can do with what you own. I can package right to repair in a very consistent manner so that it appeals to people across the political spectrum. And I intend to do so. Last week, I spoke with a gentleman from National Review about an article he wrote last year that he'd like to follow up on. I also spoke with someone from American Conservative. This week, I spoke with someone from CNN and The Guardian. Yesterday, I spoke to Sam Cedar. Next week, I may speak to Tim Poole, and I'd be more than happy to speak with someone from the Wall Street Journal or the New York Times or the New York Post. I'd be more than happy to show up on Fox News or MSNBC. I would be happy to show up on Joe Rogan or David Pakman. I don't care what their political views are. What I care about is when they have questions about what right to repair is, what it means, concerns, anything like that, that I can address their concerns in a manner that alleviates their concerns for their specific audience so that I have a new group of people who are supporting this particular issue. If I am consistent in explaining why I think right to repair is important, if I am consistent in my philosophy, but you say that you no longer support the idea or me as a person because I spoke with someone you disagree with, in spite of the fact that my views and my philosophy have remained consistent, that means that you never actually supported me, and it also means that you never supported right to repair to begin with. It means that childish salt is more important than actual issues, than ensuring that people are able to have small repair businesses in the future, that people are able to fix their own property into the future, that one or two companies doesn't control the repair landscape for a large number of devices, and that you don't have a future where you own nothing and are happy. That's more important to me than who you like. I'm going to speak to a lot more people that you don't like. There's probably not a lot of people that enjoy CNN who also enjoy National Review. There's probably not a lot of people that would enjoy Sam Cedar that would enjoy Tim Pool. There's probably not a people who would, enjoy, who would enjoy David Pakman who would also enjoy David uh, Ben Shapiro. But I don't care. It's not about my views aligning 100% with the individual that I speak to. It's about being able to get this idea across to a larger audience. And when I ran a fundraiser to a 501c4 to raise funds for lobbying so that I could try and get right to repair past, when I took on that responsibility, I no longer have the privilege, the luxury of being able to say 
that person's political beliefs might not align with this, these people in my audience, so I'm not going to speak to them. They may not like that person, so I'm not going to speak to them. Does that mean that I am going to be interviewing with David Duke or Chris Watts from Colorado? No, but it does mean that I'm going to be speaking to people who you may not like, and that's going to happen more and more. Because I'm speaking to people from such widely different areas of the political and philosophical spectrum, from such different areas when it comes to how they approach journalism, from such opposite sides of the spectrum, that I guarantee you, with an audience of 1.6 million people, someone is going to be mad at who I spoke to. But that's my job. My job is to get as many of the readers or listeners to those particular podcasts to understand what Right to Repair is and to get them to understand it from their vantage point, from the way they see the world. I'm going to approach these individuals from these outlets and speak to it from the point that they approach the world, not just from the point that I approach the world, so that I have more support for this issue. You know, there was a Wall Street Journal reporter that I spent about six hours with in my office the other day. Uh, There's a lot of stuff that I could have been doing other than spending six hours answering the many, many questions of a Wall Street Journal reporter. But the Wall Street Journal recently published an op-ed that I covered on this channel that was published by a paid industry lobbyist to fearmonger on right to repair. It was 100% fearmongering and 100% BS. And I did a video addressing that fearmongering BS. I don't particularly like the Wall Street Journal. They've published several fear-mongering BS articles. I, I just, I don't have much respect for them as a an institution. I don't have much respect for th- for their journalism. I don't have much respect for what they publish. But people do read the Wall Street Journal. There are people out there that see it as an authoritative source. So it's important to me that I meet them where they are. I meet the readers of the Wall Street Journal where they are, and I address the issue from their perspective so that I can gain more widespread support. So maybe, just maybe, the next time that I show up at a hearing, I won't be the only one there. I don't want to show up at hearings and be the only ones there. I want to show up at a hearing and have people from all sides of the political and philosophical spectrum show up and say, this is a good thing. You pass this or we vote you out. And that means creating the widest coalition humanly possible, bypassing all the culture war BS, bypassing all the partisan salt, and that is something that I am committed to doing when it comes to right to repair. I can phrase and package right to repair in a manner that appeals to people across the political spectrum, and I intend to continue doing so. And if this is something that you are going to be mad at when you see me speaking to a journalist, a newspaper, a podcaster, or a show that you don't like, you should probably unsubscribe now, because a lot of it is going to happen into the future. That's it for today, and as always, I hope you learned something. I'll see you all in the next video. Bye now.